Hey guys, Glocky here. And today I have the pleasure of comparing two of my latest toys, the Glock 26 Generation 4 and the HK P2000 SK. Uh, I've had the HK a little longer. The Glock 26 Gen 4 is a new purchase. I got that maybe a week and a half ago. So I noticed that there hadn't been any comparisons between these two guns online. I've, I've seen comparisons between the P2000 SK and the Gen 3 Glock 26, but as far as I know, this is the first comparison between a Gen 4 Glock 26 and an HK P2000 SK. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Here are the two pistols. All right, both excellent guns. I uh. I've had the HK probably for going on a year at this point. Uh, I should mention both of these guns are loaded. For your viewing pleasure, I'll be unloading them later when I talk about you know some of the differences between the guns. Okay, well, here are the two guns. How about some close-ups? show you what they look like. Here's the HK. Now, this is version 2, which features the law enforcement modification. Okay, so the trigger is very Glock-like. Okay, it's a very nice pistol. I like it a lot. Don't see myself ever getting rid of it. It's a very nice gun. Here's the Glock. Uh, the Gen 4, you guys, most of you probably know what the Gen 4s are about. You know, I've got this RTF feature, which is a improvement over the Gen 3, I would say. Gives it a nice little tacky feeling. A little easier to grip, especially when your hands are wet. So definitely nice. Here are the boxes that the two pistols would come in. Brand new. The bottom, the one towards the bottom being the box for the HK, and the one up top, box for the Glock. Some of the stuff that the guns will come with. The Glock 26 comes with two magazines and an interchangeable, two interchangeable backstraps. I'm currently running the medium backstrap on the gun right now. Uh, obviously, you can use the Glock 26 with three sizes. Without the backstrap, that's the small size. I'm currently running the medium. And then right here, left in the bag, is the large backstrap. Okay. The HKP2000 comes with two backstraps. This one being the medium, I'm currently running the large, the larger back strap on the HK. And it comes with two magazines, one being inside right now, and here is the magazine that it comes with. More often than not, you'll find me carrying these two pistols with this ammunition here. As my Samsung Galaxy S3 keeps going off in the background for some reason. I guess my friends are trying to get in contact with me. But uh, I'll be carrying, more often than not, this ammunition right here, which is excellent ammunition. It's Spear Gold Dot 124 grain, plus P ammunition. Pretty good 9mm stuff when I'm, when I'm carrying one of my 9mm pistols. That's most likely what you'll see, see me carrying it with. Uh, both of these are in 9mm. I guess I did not mention that earlier. But how about we get started on some of the comparison points, okay? Alright, this is basically what we're going to cover. It's basically along the same lines of uh, my comparison between the Glock 19 and the HK P30, which uh, some of you guys have probably seen. Um, if you haven't seen it, you know, you could just go to my page and it'll be up there somewhere. But let's continue. Alright, well, here's the fire style of the pistols. Obviously, most of you guys know the Glock 26 Gen 4 is striker fired. It's a single strike capability with a double action trigger with a standard 5.5 pound trigger pull. The HKP2000 SK, this is a V2. Uh, obviously, HKs come in several different variants. The version 2 features the law enforcement modification trigger, which uh, is at it's 7.3 pounds, but it is, however, adjustable, uh, down to 5.5 pounds. So if you did require it to be as light, say as you know the 5.5 Glock trigger then you could have it adjusted and to the point where it would be the same poundage level 
I uh, don't mind it at 7.3 pounds. It works pretty well for me. Uh, I don't need it any lighter than, than that. To me, I don't really notice a difference between the weight on the triggers. I mean, maybe the Glock one's slightly lighter, but it's nothing that I need to go to an armor to have, you know, fixed. Uh, also, the HK does have a second strike capability. Uh, basically, what that means is, for some reason, if you should pull the trigger and your round does not go off, you can com continue pulling that trigger uh, until the round were to say fire. Um, a lot of guys don't like that. Uh, it, a lot of guys feel if, for some reason, that round doesn't go off, you should, you know, perform a tactical reload and just have a new round loaded into the chamber. But some guys do like that second strike capability, especially, you know, it could come in useful, you know, maybe if you're in a very high stress situation and maybe you don't have to t t have the time to tactically reload, perhaps, you know, that second or third strike will, you know, activate the round and it will discharge. Uh, hammer obstruction possibility, this is very unlikely. It's a very unlikely event. Um, some guys may consider that a negative. I don't. Um, as far as fire style, uh, goes however that's going to be preference you know that's a subjective matter it's going to be preference on the person so with that let's continue all right let's talk about price range all right now we all know that hks usually go for a little more than what a glock would traditionally go for uh, obviously you're talking about price ranges between five and seven hundred or I'm, I'm sorry five and six hundred dollars for a standard glock uh, for an HK, it's going to cost you anywhere between, you know, $850, $950, depending on where you go, sometimes even $1,000. Um, why is that? Well, there are a lot of arguments as to why. Obviously, you know, HKs are very, very aesthetically pleasing guns. Um, it's a very nice weapon. There's no doubt about that, okay? You look at this gun, it's just really nice. I, I really like owning it. You know, it's, it's a gorgeous gun, okay? No doubt about that. You know, you look at your Glock. Albeit it's a great weapon, it's a little more bland, not very flashy, you know, it, it's simple, you know, and I think that's that's basically what Glock wanted, you know, that they want it to, to be simple, and albeit this isn't a difficult gun to use by any means of, you know, by any means it's not a difficult, you know, weapon to use, it's, in my opinion, simple to use, you know, just, just like a Glock, you pull the trigger and it goes, um, but, you know, nonetheless, um, we all know that the HK is a little more, you know, pleasing, it's got a few more parts, you know, HK's got a very good reputation, uh, they've been around for a while, so, you know, they, they've in a sense earned the right, you know, to char charge a little more for their weapons. Um, of course, the quality's outstanding on both guns, we'll talk about that later. But, um, you know, price, obviously the Glock's going to take, you know, the advantage, you know, being that it's a little less, you know, I mean, depending on how you look at it too, a lot of guys like to customize their Glocks and... Hey, depending on what you do to your Glock, you may end up spending as much as an HK, you know, on that Glock. But when we're talking about stock to stock, you know, Glock's going to take the advantage here, okay? Let's continue. Alright, size and weight. I'm not going to bore you with all the specs over here, except just to say that, you know, Glock's a little shorter um, on both the length and the, and the height. Uh, it's a little skinnier. Weight isn't really too different. I mean, sure, you've got maybe an extra four four ounces and change on the HK, but I'll be honest with you, picking up both of these guns, loaded, even unloaded, I can't say I noticed too much of a difference between them. You know, they're, they're both fairly lightweight, you know, being that they both have polymer frames. So they're not going to be, you know, very heavy compared to some of your full metal frame, you know, pistols. So, I mean... Albeit the Glock is slightly, and I mean just slightly lighter, a little bit smaller, just slightly. You know, Glock does have an advantage, but I didn't feel like it was a great advantage, so I gave the Glock a score of a 1, and the HK is going to take a 0 0.5 here, okay? Um, like I said, not a very big difference at all, so uh, I don't know if you guys are considering, you know, these two weapons, and if you're, you know, maybe deciding which one maybe a little smaller or a little lighter, this isn't one thing I would, I would consider, you know, if I was if I was deciding between these two guns. They're both small, both light, and let's keep it at that. They're not pocket pistols by any means, but both small, both light, both concealable. So, let's go from there. Safety. Both guns are going to have an equal standing as far as safety goes. 
neither of them have a manual safety and you see some of the features that each manufacturer has for for their you know each individual pistol you know Glock is all about their trigger safety their firing pin safety and their drop safety and then obviously some of the things for the HK hammer intercept notch firing pin block a disconnector with uh, this version being the LEM and then of course all Glocks with double action uh, depending on how you define double action of course but in my book double action just like the manufacturer describes them as double action firepower hey well you know what both have a 10 round standard mag no advantage here both of them get a score of one and they fit 10 rounds in each of these guns pretty effectively so there's no clear advantage here okay that's gonna be a tie All right, ergonomics. Well, obviously Glock stepped their game up big time when they introduced the Gen 4 Glocks. Obviously, this new texture here. It outdoes the old texture, I would say, by quite a bit. Don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm a fan of my Gen 3 gun, but this definitely adds a degree of security as far as weapon retention goes, you know, with, with your Glock. It's nice, it has a tacky feel to it, you know, so it's definitely a huge improvement as far as the HK. I love what they do with this. I don't know what they call this finish here on, on, their, on their straps, and I don't know if you've seen my P30 uh, video that I have on my page, but this is very pleasing right here. Um, I would say it's probably not quite as aggressive as Glock's RTF. However, they do a nice job, and I really appreciate, you know, the feel of this finish on the frame of the HKP2000. Alright, on to the PowerPoint, my trademark. Alright, I list them both as having enhanced ergonomics. Uh, obviously, the RTF grip is real nice. It, it enhances the feel of the pistol. Glock, excellent finger grooves, single-side uh, slide release. Um... You know what, with uh, with that, I think the simplicity of the Glock is, is basically why they probably did not introduce or even try to invent a ambidextrous slide release. You know, as far as Glock goes, you know, they don't want people to use the slide release in general to release, you know, the, the pistol slide. They, they rather you, you know, combat reload your pistol if, if you need to reload your pistol. So I don't really see them doing anything about that in the future. The one thing that they did do that's a pretty nice improvement is having, you know, the reversible and larger magazine release. A lot of people did complain, you know, about this, the size of the magazine release, and they've done a nice job listening, you know, to Glock users and their customers, and they've made a pretty nice product. You know, this release is real nice. Nice and large. Real nice. So, definitely a excellent work by Glock. And the one of the big things they did is adding the interchangeable back straps. They were definitely falling back, you know, on that. And, and them adding it is definitely a big plus for Glock. As far as the HK, the P2000, also enhanced ergonomics. Now, if you watch my P2000 video, you'll know that I really appreciated the ergonomics on my P on my P30. It was just a really nice pistol to shoot and hold. Especially, you know, it had that the material I was telling you about that basically was around the entire you know, grip handle of the gun. So I definitely appreciated that and this one being it's older in any case, but albeit the grip is nice enough, the P30 just blows, you know, the P2000 out of the water as far as I'm concerned as far as the grip goes. It's got that nice tacky material on the front and rear. Ambidextrous, ambidextrous excuse me, slide release. Nice and, and large. Pretty nice. Uh, ambidextrous magazine release. Now people do complain about this one. Um, not, I mean it's practical. It's just a little small so 
Some people do complain about it. I can reach it just fine, you know, probably due to my large hands, but, you know, I could see why some people might, you know, have issue with it. Uh, interchangeable back straps, and uh, some people say the stock magazine extension cramps their fingers a little. I can see why people would say that. You do have to kind of squeeze in a little bit to fit the gun completely in your hand, but you can always go out and buy the flush, you know, magazine extension, so it's not too big a deal. And just like people say about the Glock not having pinky support, guess what I did? Went out and bought pinky extension. So, as far as ergonomics go, I gave both guns a one. So it's a tie. But had this been a Gen 3 Glock 26 we were talking about, obviously the HK would have won in the ergonomics department. But the engineers at Glock, when in, they invented their Gen 4s, and now Glock is on the come up, so to say. Quality and reliability. You already know what time it is with both these manufacturers. It's a one for each guy. Both guns very, very good quality and excellent reliability. Alright, as far as customizing the guns, I uh, remember when I did my HK and uh, the P30 and the Glock 19 video that uh, the Glock took the advantage uh, on this subject. However, you know what, I ultimately decided this is more a subjective type of thing. You know what, there are people out there who want absolutely to do nothing, you know, as far as changing their guns go, okay? And then there are people out there who want to do everything to their guns. And you know what, if that's the kind of person you are, you want to go out and change your gun, great. If not, well, also great, okay? It's nice that you can go out and buy all these special parts for your Glock. But you know what? I'm one of those guys who keeps my Glock stocked. The only thing I do to my Glocks is add night sights. So, you know what? I'm not one of those guys who really customizes his gun. And you know what? There are manufacturers coming out with all kinds of stuff for HK. So I'm sure in no time, HK will have a decent amount of ex you know aftermarket parts out there. And people will be able to customize their their HKs. So that's subjective, okay? There's there's no winner, no loser as far as customizing you know the guns go, okay? You want to go out and buy stuff and customize your gun? Great. If not, hey, this is America. All right. All right, let's move on to the next. All right, accuracy and recoil. Hey, you know what? Nothing's changed here. Back with my P30 versus Glock 19 video. Okay. Both guns are accurate. Both guns, you can manage the recoil. It's not too bad. The one thing that was advantageous, you know, for one of the particular guns... You know what? This is one smooth shooting the gun. One one smooth shooting gun. The HKP 2000 SK. Okay, it's just really smooth. And you know, if I just pick up the gun here and show you. All right, we're gonna. I guess now unload the pistol. This is just. You can just see how smooth that is. I mean. Just one smooth working gun. And you know what? Albeit the Glock is nice too. To me, it's just not quite as smooth. So, you got to give it to, to the engineers at HK. They made one smooth gun. And you know what? I would say a lot of their guns are like that. You know? So, give it up to HK, guys. They, they make one smooth weapon. All right? But uh, aside from that, accuracy was a tie and recoil was a tie, okay? But the HK did take the advantage as far as mechanics and shooting. Mechanics of shooting, I should say. All right? So in this group of scored comparisons, it went 3 to 2, HK versus Glock. So let's move on. All right, well, in conclusion, as far as, you know, the score goes, the Glock got an 8, the HK got a 7.5. All right, 
Now, I know some of you HK, HK guys are going to be upset about the score. I'm not saying that the Glock is a better weapon here, okay? The fact of the matter is it's cheaper and it's lighter. And that was the entire point of this video and my other video, which compared the Glock 19 and the HK P30. Okay, I think very highly of HKs, okay? I own two of them now, and they both cost me nearly $1,000. So, I'm not going to go out and buy myself a $1,000 gun, you know, that... I basically don't care about. So, with that, I'll show you the guns one more time. Okay. They're now unloaded. Move the ammunition and the magazines to the side. Give you another look at the pistols. Now, taking the guns apart, I will say this the Glock is a little simpler to take apart, albeit the HK isn't very difficult. See, you're going to see a notch, this notch right here. Basically, you have to pull the slide back. And then once the, the notch is matched up with the slide release, then you would pull out the, the slide release. Okay? And then you'd be able to pull the slide forward and take the gun apart. It's a little complicated, not impossible. But, you know, that's all a matter of preference anyway, like I said. But anyway, these are the two. These are the two guns, guys. Hope I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I'm trying to, you know, keep up, put more videos, put more videos up for you guys. It's a matter of you know time sometimes. So I don't unfortunately have all the time available to me like I'd like. But hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to putting some more out for you in the near future. And with that said, this is Glocky. I'll see you guys later.